mutant critic of mutant related movies. And we all knew this day was coming. We knew that this day was coming. Yep, this right here that I'm about to review is the last of the mutant movies from Hollywood. Well, except for some unreleased horror based thingy that I really don't like the look of and probably won't bother with. And we're talking about the Phoenix Force again. You know, I've met Jean Grey. It's been a week or so training with her. And she's nothing like she's ever been portrayed in any of those movies. I mean, she's got a wicked sense of humour and a razor sharp mind. I can really see what Cyclops sees in her. But we won't go into that. Instead, let's talk about what we're supposed to be talking about. The movie X-Men Dark Phoenix. Released in 2019, X-Men Dark Phoenix is a re-adaptation of the Dark Phoenix saga set within the reimagined historical timeline. It's the 90s, but there's no time for clacks, as after a mission goes sideways, Jean Grey is taken over by something not of this earth, and it makes her a target, not just for human authorities, but for shape-shifting aliens too. Directed by Simon Kinberg, that co-wrote X-Men 3, does this series end with a bang or a whimper? Well, folks, there's only one way to find out. So I'll stop flapping my gums, and we'll get to the last of our mutant thon, X-Men Dark Phoenix. Two years after Wolverine saves the future, a little red-headed girl gets in a nasty car accident. Wouldn't be much of a movie if she didn't survive, though, because this is Jean Grey. And of course, Professor X takes her in at the X-Mansion. Then we cut to 1992, and the Shuttle Endeavour. Oh no, I wasn't on it, I was far too young. I mean, my powers didn't even kick in for another year after that. But I did hear about it on the news. It all seems very exciting for a kid from the sticks like me. The X-Men head out to save the crew, and mostly succeed. You know... It's a funny thing, this chaos theory. Don't look at me like that. I know about chaos theory. I took night classes at the mansion. Chaos theory could attribute all of the events of the movie to one single character. Okay, so it's Professor X who decides that the shuttle's commander, who was somewhere in the airlock trying to fix the broken engine, should be rescued as well. But still, in order to rescue the commander, they need to hold the ship together while the solar flare is bearing down on it. And in order to do that, Jean needs to be inside the shuttle. Ooh. But the blast wave is too close. And Jean gets a front row seat. And survives? Whoa. But behind closed doors, Raven's got thoughts. <laughs> yeah, thoughts. Like tearing Charlie a new one for putting a team in danger like that. And yet he argues that mutant kind is only ever one bad day away from being rounded up and thrown in a deep, dark hole. So we might as well prove that we're useful to the humans. And personally, to me, that's kind of insulting and depersonalising. But I suppose it's better than walking around with a damn collar on me neck. Which I shouldn't have to do anyway, but... Nah. Not gonna rant. Not gonna rant about it. Next scene. But Jean wasn't unscathed, and now her mind is... messy. But there are two sides to this story. Dabari. In short, evil space aliens who want whatever is affecting Jean 
which you and I know is the Phoenix Force, so that they can rebuild their home world, which the Phoenix Force itself destroyed. And Jean was right. Her father is alive. But he don't want none of this. I mean, I can understand why he did it, why he gave her away. I mean, he's a flat, um, normal human. And he's not equipped to handle a telekinetic. Especially not a blooming strong one like Jean Flipping Grey. And reasoning with the Phoenix ain't easy. So it's fighting time. And then... Humans and mutants alike, a moment for Raven Dark Home Xavier. is well and truly burned. So where next? How about Genosha? Because it has been a while since we've seen Eric Lensha. But when the army come blundering in, Jean burns that bridge too. Ah, but when you reach stuff it, you don't always make the best decisions. So Jean finally gets the truth, or part of it at least. Yeah, so for those in the back, that Solar Flare was actually the Phoenix Force. Why it latched onto Jean, I don't know. But now, she's carrying a cosmic entity inside her person. And when Magneto gets to the Phoenix, he didn't plan on what he was going to do next. Bad move. The Prof has more luck, but only because he really did care. Cared enough to give me a shot. Maybe one of these days I'll tell you the real reason why I left the X-Men. But not right now, though, because we've still got the rest of the movie to review. And Jean doesn't care for the Phoenix Force. But the authorities don't care for mutants, so everybody gets slapped in anti-mutant collars and put on a train. Which the aliens then raid for the rest of the Phoenix Force. The humans can't stop them, but X-Men United can. Yep, still skipping the fights. But only because this platform's contentinals genuinely scare me. <sighs> And Jean is still Jean on the inside. So she saves her friends and cleans house, including a special surprise for the leader. So the way this movie ends, Hank takes over at the X-Mansion, and in Paris, two old friends work on their chess game. And as for Jean, she's still alive. She's got all of space to explore now. So that's all of them then. We've got the shape of our mutant thon team. And as for this one? I think it deserves its spot as well. Charles Xavier is not the villain of this story. He finally succeeded in building a world where humans and mutants could live peacefully. He couldn't foresee that a cosmic entity would bring it all crashing down. And even if Charlie did lie about Jean's father being alive, Dude couldn't raise a powerful telekinetic on his own. So yeah, this one furthers the argument again. Mutancy is only one bad day from being hated and feared, and they have a very bad day here. But all the subtext and exposition in the world wouldn't make a lick of difference if the performances sucked. Thankfully, the cast deliver heartfelt and gut-wrenching performances, though Jennifer Lawrence is underutilised, even if Mystique's death is the catalyst for the second half of the movie. James McAvoy is given a little more meat here, as Professor X has to deal with the sins of the past. But if this movie is anyone's story, it's the story of Sophie Turner's Jean Grey. And boy does she play it. Even if, when she's possessed by the Phoenix Force, she has to be a little aloof. Emotions make you strong, and make for a good performance. Nicholas Holt's wounded beast changed in the wake of Raven's death, and Michael Fassbender's Magneto drawn back into the fray one last time, turn in solid performances as well, though most of the rest of the X-Men have little to do. And I feel for Ty Sheridan, whose Cyclops is weakly written, a slave to an image of a girl whose future doesn't include him. The flow of the movie is a little slow, which is some feat for a 100 minute movie plus credits, and it's always going to be a hard sell to suggest aliens from space, 
especially shape-shifting types like the Dabari. And I can't be the only one that thinks the Dark Phoenix saga really can't be separated from the space fantasy of the comics without losing an awful lot, much like Venom is with the Spider-Verse. But they've done their best, and the two action climaxes do wake you up in the last half hour. And it isn't a bad film! Despite the slower first two acts, the heavy suspension of disbelief, and the death of a character who in my opinion never really got a chance to shine, there is much to love here. Sophie Turner is a pitch-perfect Jean Grey. Alexandra's ship has grown into the role of Storm, even though the memory of Halle Berry lingers. And Evan Peters is a sassy Quicksilver, even if the Maximoffs were split across the two universes because of reasons. So let's wrap it up. Is it a satisfying conclusion? Yeah, mostly. Is it a rip-roaring roller coaster from start to finish? Nah. But is it a movie that I'd recommend to you? Yeah. Because it's not your powers that define you, it's what you do with them. And what I'm gonna do is thank you good folks for watching. So you know, like, dislike, do all the YouTube stuff, check out the movies down there wherever, maybe sign up at the Manix forums, but yeah, that's gonna do it. I've been your host, the multi-sided mutant Funky M, and all that remains for me to say is, uh, yeah, take it easy. Peace out, humans! Hey humans, me again. <laughs> Don't laugh, I actually used to wear this when I was an X-Man. I finally found out what was making reality shimmer, and what caused that headache from way back when. You see, a bit after switching off me camera, I got another migraine, followed by a big hole appearing in my wall. Turns out that it was a portal to another reality. And guess what? There was another me! Funky Monkey's his name. Apparently he's been getting my mutant font episodes bleed over through to his side. And he's got some kind of magic ring that can do weird stuff like open portals across dimensions. So I went in and had a look. Not that much difference from ours though. Actually he's asked me for a crossover that uh, funky monkey guy. I'll keep you posted on that. Anyway. See you around humans.